In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a project in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2018. I have a shortcut to it on my desktop, however you can find the application if you go to the start menu and search under your apps or if you do a quick search in the search bar. So if I'm going to double click that and it will open for me. Before starting your project in Premiere, it's always best practice to create a folder structure either on your P drive or your desktop. This will be where you save your video clips, um, it will be where you save your Premiere Pro project, it will also be where you um, store any audio or any video, video documents. So if I just minimize Premiere again, you'll notice on my desktop I have a test project folder. Inside here I have a selection of folders and inside Premiere Pro this is where I will choose to save my actual project file that I edit in. You'll see I've got a test footage folder where I have all my footage is and I have a scratch disks folder. I also have some audio folders, documents folders and exports folder which is where the exports will go to when I finish my edit. So back to Premiere Pro, you'll be greeted with this start window here when you first open Premiere Pro. Here you can choose to create a new project or you can even open old projects that you've already been editing. So we're going to start off by clicking create new. The new project window will then open and you have the opportunity to give it a name, choose a location where you want the project to save. You can also set scratch disks here. So let's give it a name. So I'm going to call this test project one. I'm then going to click browse next to location and choose where I want to save this. So I'm going to choose that location on the desktop that I created in my folder structure. So this is where you'll want to navigate to that folder structure you have created to make sure you're saving your Premiere Pro project in the right place and you'll know where to go the next time you want to come to start editing your project. So click Premiere Pro and I'm going to just choose this folder. So I'm going to select folder. If you then go to your scratch disks folders, I'm going to show you how to set these um, and then I'll explain why you need to. So if you click browse next to the first one, which is captured video, you want to navigate to that folder structure you created. So I'm going to go to the desktop, I'm going to go to my test project, I'm going to go to Premiere Pro and I've created a scratch disks folder inside there. I'm going to double click that and then I'm going to click select folder and you'll notice it's gone from captured video to custom and the path you can see below is my folder structure and into my scratch disks. You then just need to click browse and click select folder for all the others and you'll notice it just jumps to scratch disk. So scratch disks are important to set due to this being where your auto saves go so you'll notice project auto save goes there so if you're editing a video and you're you're saving quite frequently but maybe you haven't saved it in a while and premiere crashes for whatever reason you're thinking oh no i've lost all of my work you'll be able to go to where you've set your scratch disk and hopefully there'll be an auto save file there so hopefully you won't have lost all your work the other the, the other um tabs are less important to you. Your key one is project autosave. So this just means that your autosaves aren't just saving in a random place on your computer and you'll really struggle to find them. You'll know exactly where they are if your project um, crashes for any reason or you accidentally lose the work for some reason. So it's always best practice to set the scratch disks in a location that you know of. Once you've done that, you can then click OK. you'll then be greeted with the main setup of um, Adobe Premiere Pro. So there's a few different tabs across the top, assembly, editing, color, effects, audio, graphics, and libraries. This is basically how you want your windows um, arranged on your screen. So I always choose to go for editing, and then you have your source window in your top left, you have your program window in your top right, you have your project window in your bottom left, and you have your timeline in your bottom right. So. Before you start importing footage and jumping straight into the edit, it's best practice to create a new sequence. So we go to File, New, and we just scroll down to Sequence. You can also use the shortcut of Control N. So I'm going to just click Sequence. You will more than likely be filming with a DSLR, so it's best to set your sequence to what camera you filmed with. So I'm going to go for Digital SLR. I'm going to go for 1080p just by clicking the little arrows at the next to them. And then if you've used the college camera, it will be a DSLR 1080p and it will be 25 frames per second. You then can give it a sequence name. So it's currently called sequence one. So I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to call this test project 
one. You may want to call this, for example, short film edit one or um, the actual name of your project, whichever, whatever you may have called it. Once you've done that, you can click OK. You'll then notice, for some reason it jumps to libraries, don't worry, you can just click back on your project tab and you'll notice it's down here. So this is your sequence. You'll also notice that there's a little blue tiny icon where it looks like um, a couple of little bricks and a line going through it. That is basically a tiny example of your timeline. So those little bricks, the little video clips and the blue bar going through it is your playhead, which is this bar, which you use for scrubbing through your footage. So it instantly opens in a thumbnail view, which I'm not really a huge fan of. I prefer the list view. So I'm just going to go down here in the bottom left hand corner and select list view. It then lists it out. You've started, you've created a sequence. That's brilliant. And um, the sequence, like I mentioned before, is best because it matches, you can get it to match the footage you have recorded. So if you filmed on DSLR, um, it will match that and it won't have any problems when you import the footage in and you throw it on the timeline, you'll just be able to edit seamlessly because you've set the sequence settings for that um, type of video file. Um, if you're using multiple um, different cameras, maybe you've used a DSLR and a GoPro, um, you'll probably still more than likely want to set it to the DSLR sequence setting. Um, and then when you um, drag your GoPro footage over to the the timeline and um, if you're doing it first it might prompt you and say do you want to change your timeline settings and um, you'll probably want to select no because you've set it so it matches the DSLR that you may be used to um, film the majority of your footage with. If you use the GoPro to film the majority of your footage you will want to um, select yes when it prompts you saying do you want to adjust your sequence settings. Okay so that is how you create a sequence and set up an Adobe Premiere Pro project correctly. Thank you.